This is going to be another look at the Ravens' pass game, and I'm going to kind of delve into the coverages that they saw a little bit in 2021 and try to explain to people how you can sometimes, as an offense, kind of predict the coverage even before seeing how the defensive uh, players, specifically the defensive backs and linebackers, have been deployed. A lot of coaches, not just in the NFL but at all levels, they play certain coverages in certain parts of the field if you give them a particular personnel grouping. This first play we're going to look at is um, actually not going to be a pass play. It's going to end up being a Lamar Jackson scramble. I'll, I'll let the play run <clears throat> as I talk a little bit. It ends, it's a man defense, you know, a four-man rush, somewhat similar to man free, except you've got two safeties that are dropping down, kind of inverting themselves. It's a third and 10. The Ravens are down 10 to three at this point, as you saw a moment ago, late second quarter of the, of the 2020 playoff game up, uh, down in Tennessee. And what you see when, when you play man against Lamar Jackson, whereas man free, cover two man is sometimes the worst, which this is somewhat of, this is a version of cover two man, is when people's backs are turned and they're running away, you can't, you can't do that. Not with a guy that's this explosive, not with a guy that's this fast. So you may say to yourself, well, hold on a second, coach. Like people played, people played blitz zero or, you know, you call it sticks and they played that. Isn't that man? Well, no, it's a totally different technique. It is technically man because you only have four guys responsible, or maybe five if we're in empty, you know, for the receivers, tight ends, or running backs if they're split out, you know, out wide. But it's a different coverage whereby you have, you know, maybe a corner, a safety, a safety, and a corner who are all lined up at the sticks, which is about where that well, I guess the sticks would be about like here, the yard the yard to gain for a first down. So I'm not talking about blitz zero. I'm not talking about sticks coverage. That's different than man free or cover two man, which is essentially what this is. The Ravens know the coverage, possibly because of w what Vrabel plays uh, in certain parts of the field. But you can see when Andrews goes in and motions in, he looks out. He looks at number 24, see if he follows him, and he does. But he now knows he's got man. I think these guys are going to drop down and sit at the sticks looking to defend, you know, the over route that Mark Andrews typically runs or anything that's like an in-breaking route, whether it's late or immediate. As you can see the two safeties sitting here, you know, just beyond the sticks, helping out. Marquise Brown's route is, you know, interesting. It's going into the area where Willie Sneed is running through, number one. And number two, it's also running directly at this safety. So maybe there's a, a read there that we didn't get, or maybe this is maybe his route was hard coded and there was no read available to him, so he had to run that route. But in any case, once they got backs turned, running with a defender, you know, he's running with Marquise Brown, he's running with this defender. Uh, Mark Andrews is releasing late, and I think 24 is going with him, or 24 was actually directly lined up on him. And another another DB goes with a running back. It's over, too fast. That's why teams played blitz zero or sticks. That's why they did that. So that as we get as we get the ends and angle, I'll briefly try to explain this. I've touched on it multiple times in other videos. You know, when they lined up one, two, three, four, five, maybe even six or sometimes seven guys, to, you know, when you had the guy, when we had the running back to our right, there would be like a strong safety over here. Forgive the sloppy writing. That's why they did that, to constrict running lanes for Lamar. You know, if you're if you're attacking him from four or five six different angles there's literally nowhere for him to go and do this you know what I mean so so blitz zero sticks is vastly different than this coverage we're seeing here whereby there's only a four-man rush there's six gaps to worry about two a gaps two B gaps two C gaps and if somebody doesn't do a perfect job or your stunt doesn't work out correctly your te exchange then you get this stuff like this to happen so you can't play man free you can't play Two man against Lamar in some of these situations because he's just too dangerous once backs are turned. Now, in in other situations, you know people are going to play zone coverage. I'm going to give you one other situation that's drastically different. All right, and this is not an illustration of Lamar's um, scrambling ability at all. This is from this season up at Pittsburgh. Of course, we you know pulled within twenty to nineteen on this touchdown pass. And it's going to be to uh, Sammy Watkins down here. We'll let it run maybe once or twice, let you see what Lamar does. Empty set by us, which I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest with you. Steelers only rush four. There, there's, there's some type of check between Minka Fitzpatrick 
and Devin Bush here. They're confirming with each other what they're doing. Pre-snap, you could see Devin Bush uh, slapping his helmet. Like, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. And so he's getting some kind of call from Minka Fitzpatrick, who's only probably eight feet away. Nobody's open over there. They're playing four over three. I'll go back to it and show it to you again. Back to the backside, Lamar comes back. Sammy Watkins open for a great touchdown catch in the back of the end zone. This is clearly not man-free, clearly not cover two man, right? They're rushing four. They're, they're essentially going to play zone. I'm going to pause it here. When I say zone, it's zone principles. You've got three receivers for the Ravens here. And you've got four defenders for the Steelers. That's just called four over three. On the backside, you've got two receivers for the Ravens. And you've got three. Mathematically, they're gonna they're plus one in both situations. Why? Well, because we have a quarterback who's standing back here attempting to read and then throw the football. That's, that's just how the math works when it's 11 on 11 and one of our guys has to throw the football. So they've got four over three over here where Lamar's looking initially and nothing's opening up. I believe he's trying to look for, you know, surprise, surprise, Andrew's in here checking up. And then you've got Brown on this little clear out. I mean, could we have thrown the ball way up in this corner to Marquise Brown? Maybe, but keep in mind it is third and five, third and six. And Lamar has been pressured during this game. Now, T.J. Watt does not rush. He decides to get in the throwing lane because he's anticipating, you know, going us throwing at the side where Mark Andrews and Marquise Brown were lined up. Makes sense. I actually like the route combination. I feel like this guy's, you know, kind of beat. He could have maybe recovered. But beautiful job by Lamar and Sammy Watkins. Watkins had gotten open on this route earlier in the game. Um, underneath the coverage. And then here is able to get behind the defender who looks like he is playing man. Even though he's even though he's lined up. Excuse me. He looks like he's playing man post-snap. Even though in the beginning it's, it's clearly zone. Now they've matched up at this point. And it, you know. It's a man concept. All zone becomes man eventually. So you've got man there. This corner's kind of hanging out with nothing to do. Watkins takes his route into open space. Beautiful job, man. Beautiful job. So how does this relate to the previous play? We know where we're going to get certain coverages generally. Like Bill Belichick is a man-free guy on third down because he's usually got really good corners, and he usually trusts his free safety and at least one inside linebacker to be a good pass dropper in the middle. And then if your quarterback does break contain, that inside linebacker can help. In any case, you see Lamar over here looking to the side where Andrews and Brown work on the back. Boom. Perfect illustration of what he can do when he has time. Are we always going to get this much time? No. Why? To, again, TJ Watt didn't rush. You've only got a three-man rush. So we're actually doing a good job here. Uh, and this guy struggled in the two games that we played against them, 48, when he got on the field. I'm not sure why uh, 56 wasn't on the field. How does this relate? Going back to my question a moment ago, how does this relate to the previous play? You know, if you don't pressure Lamar, bad things happen. Look, the previous play, they rushed four against Tennessee. Lamar was able to survey the field. No one was open. Find a seam in the defense, take off for a huge touchdown run that tied the game at halftime 10 10. Of course, we come out in the third quarter. We took control of the game with our first drive, I believe, of the third quarter going down. I think it was a long drive. We scored to make 17-10. No pressure on Lamar. This play here. Granted, you know, we're kind of already rolling offensively, but we're down here inside the 10, third down, no pressure on Lamar. I think at some point, teams identified in 2021, like, hey, look, look at what he's doing, throwing the ball. We know what he can do running the ball. We have to pressure him and just live with these other guys, maybe making plays, maybe not making plays. We didn't. Uh, do a good job, I don't think, as a staff of putting those other guys in position to make plays like this against that blitz zero sticks look. I do not think that, and I said this multiple times last year, I do not think that sticks blitz zero was something that teams knew was going to stop Lamar Jackson. No, I think the the progression of how they came to use it was this. Look at what he's doing throwing the football. Talking about first half of the season, 2021. Look at what we know he can do running the football. The first play I showed you. If there's no pressure, this man will figure out a way to beat you. So, team said, well, what can we do? At some point, the Bengals, the Broncos, uh, did use that little you know, six, seven-man pressure sparingly. They did. The Broncos definitely brought a lot of pressure in the second half of our game up there in week four. Of course, we won 23-7. to 
And we did have some good moments in the pass game, not just Marquise Brown's long touchdown, di- long diving touchdown in the in the left end zone, but other ones as well. Duvernay played well. Prochet had two big catches in that game. As we get to the Cincinnati game, Cincinnati started to use it some on on third downs. Now they were only bringing six man pressure, but it showed people, hey, this is working. And then Miami, of course, showed everyone not only did it work, but it broke our offense because we did not create enough space to attack where we had the matchups to win. And I've covered that many times in other videos. So he had time on these two plays. Makes play, one of them makes plays with his feet. Second one gets to number three in the progression, if you ask me. Probably one was Andrews. Two was Brown to the right against the Steelers. And then you know coming back, I shouldn't even say three. I don't think that Watkins was part of the progression. He was a backside portion of the of the route con- of the route you know pl- of the play, and Lamar just found him on a nice little adjustment by Watkins behind the defender. Uh, let me know what you think of some of my thoughts. I have covered that sticks blitz zero shit ad nauseum. I really don't want to do it anymore. Uh, Lamar coming back today to camp, you know, just reminded me of. I, I decided to go back and look at some film. I have like folders saved. It says big plays Lamar. And these two were in there, and it was interesting to me. Like, there's time he makes plays with his arm. There's time he makes plays with his feet. There, you know, there's time sometimes where he moves out of the pocket, finds someone, and then that guy gets some, you know, yards after the catch. Mark Andrews, you know, Devin Duvernay, Prochet against the Broncos, what, whoever the whatever the case may be. Hope you guys appreciate these videos. I'm not sure that this falls into the one play, you know, film study that I have been doing. Uh, definitely trying to put out as many videos on Lamar because. Uh, it's one of the most interesting things to talk about for the Ravens and probably for a lot of people who aren't Ravens fans to speculate on, you know, how he'll do. There's people who have opinions across all all spectrums, you know, that he's going to be trash again, which he wasn't last year, that he's going to be the MVP, which he was last year for the first five, six, maybe even seven weeks of the season. He, he didn't play, you know, great against the Bengals, obviously. And, and is it going to be somewhere in between? You guys let me know what you think of the film study, what you think of my, my thoughts about when Lamar has time. Uh, so essentially, you know, what coverages do you play? You play the ones that don't give him time. 